Donald Trump just said Canada could open the faucet and help solve California's drought problem. Presumably, he was talking about the Columbia River as that's the only major western river that flows from Canada into the United States. And the Columbia River Treaty is up for renegotiation. That got me thinking, where does the Columbia River start? Where does it end? And what does it mean to us all? The short story is that the Columbia River starts in the Canadian Rockies and wanders around Canada, down into the States, and out to the Pacific Ocean. For the longer version, we'll have to get to a place called Canal Flats, and that's going to take about two days. That's the Kettle Valley, Kettle River. Kettle Valley is named that. Well, this is a pretty cool road, which I've seen before, but I've never ridden on. Because part of the Kettle Valley Railway is right above here, and we rode it on our trip to the Kootenays a couple of years back, and we could see the road, Pulse and Detour. Should connect to the, uh, it's actually called the Columbia and Western Rail Trail. And this is the Columbia Rail Trail. Now, the question is, where is the closest campsite? Yes. Cute. <laughs> There's even some old rail here. Uh, we better turn you off. Look at that. Very cool. A nice little flat here. I hope it doesn't get too buggy. Yeah, could get buggy. But very pretty. Nine thirty, and I am out of my little campsite on the Columbia and Western Rail Trail, which was really nice. Off towards Canal Flats, which I think is about four hours away. It's funny when we did the the Kootenays and did this trail, the Columbia and Western Rail, we never realized how close it parallels the highway. <laughs> It felt like you were miles and miles away from anywhere. But I'll put, put a, a link in the description to that video. It's, it's pretty remarkable, the trestles and the tunnels. It's a very cool ride. Salmo, heading for Kootenai Pass. Down here near Creston, where you finally flatten off. <clears throat> now heading for 
Oh, where am I going now? Cranbrook. Moi. Just getting up to Cranbrook. Glimpse of the Rockies. This section of the Rocky Mountain Trench is known as the Columbia Valley, with the Rocky Mountains over on this side to the east and the Bugaboos to the west. Pre contact and during the early years of Western exploration, this valley was a hub of First Nations transportation, partly because of a curiosity of geology. The Kootenai River here flows south, but it's separated from the Columbia headwaters by a two-kilometer wide berm of land, which is where Canal Flats sits. It's one kilometer south of Columbia Lake, out of which the Columbia River flows north. But it was renamed for a guy named Bale Groham, who had the idea of building a canal between Columbia Lake and the Kootenai River, which would allow ships to move back and forth. The remnants of it are still visible just on the southwest side of town. So that is Columbia Lake. Maybe we go up the west side. I am looking for a campsite. Found a gravel road. Not sure where it goes. Looks pretty though. No vehicles. Too bad. But I did see a um, little nook back here just off the highway. This looks pretty good. The campsite is not so pretty this evening, but um, a little ominous cloud wise. Oh, just felt the first drop of rain. I think this will work okay. We can sit under the tarp. I gotta move some stuff off the bike if it's gonna rain, but yeah. It's 9.16 and I'm all packed up and headed for Fairmont Hot Springs. Breakfast first. It's uh, had the occasional shower here, which made the pack up a bit more challenging, but 
overall it was pretty good. So this is the Columbia River, just after the lake. Fairmont. I have had some breakfast. Now I'm looking for the hot springs. It's a very cutesy little town, a resort town, obviously. Exploring. RV hell here, but I don't think there's any way to get down to where the hot springs obviously are from here. And I've left the bike in the public parking lot. I have to go to the path that's totally blocked off. <laughs> go under the pedestrian bridge. Well, that was nice. It's also a pretty spectacular view of the Columbia River Valley from up here. This is the turn off to Invermere. Canadian explorer David Thompson of the Northwest Company spent the winter of 1807-08 at Kootenay House, near present-day Invermere. Over the next few years, he explored much of the river and its northern tributaries. In 1811, he traveled down the Columbia to the Pacific Ocean, arriving at the mouth just after John Jacob Astor's Pacific Fur Company had founded Astoria. Thompson was the first European to travel the entire length of the river. This is the Columbia Wetland Wildlife Management Area. The large, lush Columbia River wetlands, a fertile wintering ground for elk, deer, moose, and many other creatures, spans over 180 kilometers and is the longest continuous running wetlands remaining on the continent. So in the early days there was a lot of logging in this area and they floated the logs down the Columbia to Golden. And then in 1915 the first train between Cranbrook and Golden put an end to the riverboats which had been running from late 1880s. Go 
Golden is situated between two national parks and some of the most pristine wilderness in the Rockies. It was originally a survey camp for guys that were laying out what is now known as Rogers Pass. And when a neighboring camp named themselves Silver City, well, they just one up them. So this is the Kicking Horse Pass pedestrian bridge. Apparently, it is the longest spanning wood-framed pedestrian bridge in North America. So this is Edelweiss Village, built by the CPR in the 1900s for Swiss uh, alpine guides who were hired to uh, help with the surveying. <laughs> Kinda cool. Crazy. Beautiful. Drive BC says the Rogers Pass is closed in both directions due to a traffic incident. This used to be Donald. It's pretty much a ghost town now. It's on the northeast shore of the Columbia River and during the Canadian Pacific Railway construction from 1881 to 1885, it was a lively canvas town. But by uh, 1884, the westward advance of the railway had kind of left it behind. You can't get into it now. It's all private property. Looks like they might sell some of it off. Okay, not much left at Donald. Looks like... Well, this is... The road that goes down to the Columbia River. We have to leave the Columbia near the submerged village of Beavermouth as it forms Kimbasket Lake, as there are no roads around the North End, an area known as the Big Bend. However, we can get a glimpse through Google Earth. The lake is formed by Mica Dam and covers 427 square kilometers containing 24.8 cubic kilometers of total storage. From its southern end, it stretches more than 183 kilometers northwest, almost reaching the town of Valmont. Nasty. Up here in the past, it's not very nice. Hopefully it's better down by Revelstoke. 